All right. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so for the other, there was three people. Thank you. Good morning, everybody else. All right. Yeah, welcome. Hi, my name is Bill Brewer. I'm a resident here in Washington County. And actually, I just thought about this the other day. This was my 20th year in Washington County. I grew up in Milwaukee and Menominee Falls and went and served our country in the Air Force. I was a pilot, came back to Southeast Wisconsin in the late 90s and moved out here in the early 2000s. So just glad to be a part of this community. I just want to welcome all of our guests and specifically thank uh, our county executive, Josh Shulman, who you'll hear from later, and our planning committee for this wonderful event, this fourth annual Washington County Juneteenth celebration. I just wanna give those folks a hand right now, if you don't mind. We're gonna have a lot of fun today. We're going to uh, enjoy some great speakers and some, uh, some history, learn more about our country and about our county. I just wanna tell everybody right up front that uh, if you take a look uh, to your right and my left, you'll see a table over there that's got plenty of giveaways, lots of information about Juneteenth and some takeaways, some books for, for kids. And also one of our guests who is a children's author, she actually has, uh, she's offering some, some merchandise back there as well. And I would highly encourage you guys to go back and take a look. I'll tell you more about her in just a little bit. But just a very, very brief history about Juneteenth. So June 19th, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger from the Union Army had his troops enter into Galveston, Texas. Now, this is a full two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation took place and came into effect in January of 1863. But finally, this was the last state in the, in the nation that actually got the word and we could enforce the end of slavery. So slavery was abolished legally two and a half years earlier, but in real terms, this is the day that commemorates the actual abolition of slavery. Uh, in Texas, and that's why it's such a momentous occasion. Uh, it became a federal holiday, as many of you know, just a couple of years ago in 2021. And it's it's a very symbolic of the progress that our nation has made, right? When it comes to how we treat our citizens and how we recognize all of the people that live here legally as citizens of this great nation. And I just kind of want to point you to this flag. You know, this is the Juneteenth flag, official Juneteenth flag. It's actually flying in 10 different locations around the county which I think is amazing. It's a great way to get the word out. But even looking at the flag, you might not understand fully what it represents. And I just want to briefly explain that to you before we have our, our invocation. When you take a look at the flag, first notice, the first thing jumps out at me is red, white, and blue. Because we live in the greatest nation on earth, and these colors are consistent with that. In the very middle is a star. Now, for those who may not know, Texas as a state is called the Lone Star State, so a single star. But obviously it also represents all 50 of our states, right? It's symbolized on our nation's flag. Then the outline of the star around it is a nova, a new star promising a new beginning. And when you take a look at the fields of blue and red, you'll notice there's not a straight line between them. It's actually an arc. It's curved like the horizon because this also represented a new beginning for newly, truly, if you will, practically minted citizens in our nation. It's a new beginning, new opportunities for a group of people that have been held down for hundreds of years. But thankfully, we don't live in that country anymore, and we're here to celebrate that fact today. So we want to begin our program formally by welcoming Pastor Clark Schultz for the invocation. He is the, the pastor of Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. Pastor Clark, would you please come up? Good morning. We'll begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I am a new transplant to Washington County. Moved here four years ago. I taught high school for 15 years prior to that. And the reason we moved here is because my wife grew up here and she loved it here. And usually whenever I would have a, in our faith, a call, she would say, we're not going there. We're not going to Madison. We're not going to St. Louis, and then when I hung up the phone and she said, where is this one to? I said, West Bend, and her reaction was, that's my home. And the four years that we have been here and the friends that we have made, that is so true. But I did grow up in the hill country of the pre-outlet mall, Johnson Creek. <laughs> I grew up in the country 
we lived on a busy road and my mom would always say, you cannot bike on this road. So you need to find something fun to do. Well, a couple of my friends came over one day and we had done a project, built a garage and behind our home was the pile of dirt that we had from the hole we dug for the garage. So we decided a bunch of seven, eight year olds to play a game, King of the Hill. Now, when you are a seven or eight year old, King of the Hill is a pretty good game when everybody is the same weight. Enter my brother of eight years, also served in the Air Force, as did my parents. Thank you for your service. My 16 year old brother decided to join in. And if you are driving by Highway B in Jefferson County, just past my house, and you looked off into the distance, you would literally see seven and eight year old bodies flying in the air because they could not take him down. I remember one time though running up the hill and I don't know if this is because he knew that I'd probably tattle on him, but one time I ran up the hill and he grabbed me by the hand and said, brother, I have you and put me behind him. And it was fun to watch everybody trying to get up me safe behind him and I was secure. I want to ask everyone here today just real thought provoking question here and be, be real with yourself. What hills are you running up right now? What struggles are you facing? Race? Stress? The, the past? That, that you wish, boy, I, I wish I could just forget, or I, I'm so sorry for the dumb things I have said and done. Now, I'm gonna ask you, what are you using to get up that hill? We can find solace in pills, in, 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 in any kind of numbing medication to help us, but there is only one. And that's the one that went to another hill, Jesus. The king of the hill, the real king of the hill, who took all of your sins on him. Now, again, in, in scripture, and if you can find it, I'll, I'll buy you whatever, a blizzard, I, I like blizzards, but if you can find in scripture where it says, because you're here, because maybe you have faith, maybe you believe in Jesus, maybe you have some higher power that your life is gonna be perfect. No, it doesn't say that in scripture. But we do have the promise from Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, an ever present help in trouble. So friends, as you run up the hill, know that you don't run alone. Know that you have a savior who tells you, get behind me, I have this, it'll work out. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Great words. Appreciate it. And I would like to invite up our Washington County Executive, Josh Showman. Uh, he is not only a county executive, he is my friend. And he's going to uh, give us the proclamation of this holiday. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, you got them warmed up, Bill. Nice job. Thank you. I am so excited to be here today. Uh, I was just talking to my friend, Will Martin, who's going to follow me up here in a moment. Uh, believe it or not, this is our fourth annual Juneteenth Day in Washington County, count them four. Uh, that is one more than the number of years that Juneteenth has been a federal holiday in the United States of America. Right. Yeah, that's worth clapping for. And it's worth clapping for because here in Washington County, we have been called the freest county in America. Uh, and that, that happened actually at a place, no, it was this place. Uh, this place, uh, when we op opened our doors and opened up this golf course weeks before everybody else, while well, everything else in, in the state of Wisconsin was locked down. But it's really more than that. You see, Juneteenth Day is also called Freedom Day. 
But if you think about what we just celebrated mm, two or three weeks ago with Memorial Day, it's the unofficial kickoff to summer. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day. What we really have here is a, is a national holiday in the midst of Freedom Month in the freest county in America, in the freest nation in the world. So let's celebrate that. Juneteenth, June 19th, 2023, whereas during the early founding of our country, slavery was a polarizing issue passed from one generation to the next. And whereas by the time Wisconsin became a state in May of 1848, to keep a truce on the issue of slavery and balance in the United States Senate, paired states entering the union as a free state or a slavery state and Wisconsin a free state paired with Texas, which joined the union in 1846. And whereas the political tension on slavery boiled over in 1861, as many slave states left the union to create the Confederate States of America as an effort to preserve the inhumane practice and began the fourth year long, four, four year long civil war, which saw thousands of Washington County men join over 90,000 other Wisconsinites to play a key role in winning the civil war. And whereas in 1862, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which went into effect January of 1863 and freed slaves in Southern states. And whereas in February of 1865, Wisconsin became the 18th state to ratify the 13th Amendment to end slavery. And whereas in April of 1865, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, ending the Civil War. And by June of 1865, two months after the war and two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, Texas remained a slave state until Union Army General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas to issue General Order Number no. 3, freeing Texas slaves. And whereas in December of 1865, the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution was proclaimed, adopted by Secretary of State William H. Seward, finally ending the long slavery political debate in the United States. And whereas in generations that have followed, race relations remain an issue in our country, our state, in our county. And in June 2020, Washington County hosted our first Juneteenth celebration. And in June 2021, Congress passed a resolution finally catching up with Washington County. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's not in here. Uh, passed a resolution establishing Juneteenth as a federal holiday that was signed into law Juneteenth National Independence Day Act on June 17, 2021. Now, therefore, I, Josh Shulman, Washington County Executive, do hereby proclaim June 19th, 2023, as Juneteenth Day across Washington County, and ask all citizens to love your neighbor by coming together this Juneteenth to pause in remembrance of the nearly 100-year battle to end slavery and to pray for our communities as we continue to mend race relations. Thank you. Okay, next I would just like to ask everyone to please rise for the singing of our national anthem. I'd like to welcome up Peter Jabot, who is the professor of music at UWM Washington County. He's also the director of the Moraine Chorus and Friends, who will sing the first two verses of our national anthem. And if you didn't hear them warm up, you are also in for a treat.
Sure want to go verses three and four maybe for us? Maybe it was a little cooler we could do that, right? So I'd like to welcome up our first uh, speaker. Uh, his name is Will Martin. Will Martin, if you don't know him, he's a small business owner and has been for over 20 years. Currently the CEO of Wisconsin Diversified Investments. He actually served in two governor's administrations, both Governor Tommy Thompson and Governor Scott Walker. And you may recognize his name. He was on the ballot most recently to run for Lieutenant Governor. One of my newest friends and someone I respect highly, Will Martin. Welcome him up. All right, now I'm going to try this on a screen. I think I'm, I'm old enough to prefer the printed page, but we'll see how this works out. So, County Executive Showman, uh, Juneteenth Committee members, uh, distinguished fellow speaker Nia, uh, attendees, it's a privilege to, to be your guest today and to welcome you to my birthday. Oh. It's always been a point of pride uh, that I was born on Freedom Day, um, actually Father's Day too, so I seem to be the perfect child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the day when all God's children in Confederate states were no longer enslaved, when the nation took a step forward toward a more perfect union. Some three million African descendants living in Confederate states were no longer property. They were no longer considered to be three-fifths of a human being. By the way, we usually don't talk about it, but slavery still existed in places like Kentucky and, and in uh, Delaware, even after Juneteenth, uh, because those states were not in rebellion against the Union, and therefore were not affected by President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. So to, to actually rid uh, this nation forevermore from every corner of slavery, it required ratifying the 13th Amendment of the Constitution, which became effective just months after President Lincoln's death in 1865. With that ratification, our post-Civil War nation took another giant step toward perfecting its union. Of course, you and I know that decreeing that all men and women are free and equal doesn't just make it so. Juneteenth marks the culmination of the sacrifices that so many made to try to right the wrongs of slavery, which have been codified in our Constitution from the very founding of our United States. It's a story about sin and redemption. You know, sometimes we can get lost in the nationwide numbers and history. We can sometimes get lost in the belief that the work of expanding freedom and equality was the work of that first Juneteenth generation. 
My friends, you and I know advancing freedom and equality and perfecting our union is not the work of a single generation. It's the work of every generation. I wanna talk a bit today about our journey as a state and region in the wake of Juneteenth. As African-Americans began the great migration to the North in the early 1900s, sundown towns, or as I call them, dusk communities, began to be declared. So what is a, a sundown town or a dusk community? It's a community in which African-Americans and other people of color were prohibited from living. These communities were referred to as such because African-Americans and others had to be out of those communities by sundown. My friends, many of those sundown towns or dust communities were declared in the Midwest as post-slavery generations of African-Americans came north seeking new opportunity beyond the South's Jim Crow practices and laws. Having been raised in the South uh, during much of my childhood, I'm very familiar with segregation. As an example, my hometown in Tennessee operated two separate swimming pools for most of my adult life. Uh, because of that separation, that segregation. Uh, many of us associate segregation with the South, but restrictions on African Americans and other people did not just exist solely in the South. I had the opportunity to review the original deed for the first home I bought. The house was built in the 1920s and it's located near the Sherman Park area in uh, Milwaukee, if you know Milwaukee. In the deed is a covenant that requires future home buyers to ensure that no coloreds live in the home, um, even if they're domestic help, and that any coloreds working in the home or on the grounds would have to be out of the area by that day uh, sundown. On September 16, 1924, the Milwaukee Journal reported about a proposed Negro district and plans to restrict blacks. The article went on to state that the Negro population of the city is growing so rapidly that something will need to be done. That something was to require black residents to live between third and ninth streets from State to Walnut, less than 40 uh, blocks of the city. As a result of the segregation, three and four black families often lived in a dilapidated, rented, uh, single family home. At the same time, community leaders were trying to raise capital for a black bank. They tried several times to obtain a bank charter from the state of Wisconsin, something that had never been done before in the history of this state. Their request went unanswered and rejected. With nowhere else to go, those community leaders reached out to someone who worked in the governor's residence. There was a position for a black man there. That man found an opportunity to tell the governor about the deplorable living conditions uh, for black Wisconsinites in Milwaukee. The governor, upon hearing this, immediately ordered the state of Wisconsin to issue a bank charter. It was just 10 days after that Negro district article I mentioned had been published. Columbia Savings and Loan Association received its charter. While segregation persisted and those families still had to live in the Negro district, they could now begin to buy a home another major milestone toward expanding freedom and equality and perfecting our union. Today, as I serve as the Vice President of Columbia Savings and Loan Association, among owning my business, when other banks would not lend to the black community in order to buy a home or finance houses of worship, the black community banded together, worked tirelessly until it was able to establish what is now Wisconsin's oldest black owned business. It's Wisconsin's only black owned bank and it is the sixth oldest black owned bank in the United States. It's another step for expanding freedom and equality and perfecting our union. The Negro district continued from those early days of the last century until the civil rights era. In fact, Wisconsin was part of the impetus to pass federal legislation prohibiting racial discrimination in housing. Belle Phillips, who would become the first person of color ever to serve in a statewide constitutional office in the state of Wisconsin, and Father James Groppy, a Catholic priest, they marched from the north side of Milwaukee to the south side, 
only to have rocks, bottles, and epithets hurled at them. Milwaukee was nicknamed the Selma of the North, and it proved to the nation that segregation was not simply a thing of the South. The state's largest city was part of the reason why the Federal Fair Housing Act was enacted in 1968. Because of the Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the fact that it would be applied across the nation, the requirement to live in the Negro district ended at long last. Not only did it end the decades long ghettoization, it rendered sundown towns illegal and race-based housing covenants had become null and void. Another major milestone toward expanding freedom and equality and perfecting our unit. I came here as a, a teenager to our state uh, from a poor family from the South, earned a scholarship and graduated from Beloit College, worked for both governors Tommy Thompson and Scott Walker, opened and operate my own business for 20 years. And last year I got a chance to run for office of Lieutenant Governor. In my lifetime, we have eliminated legally sanctioned racial discrimination. That's another incredible blow to move forward toward uh, justice. Thank God we live in a state, in a country capable of acknowledging faults and making progress toward mo moving uh, for a more perfect union. Making that progress toward greater freedom and equality did not come like some Christmas. Not for that first Juneteenth generation, not for the families that moved to Wisconsin in the early years of the last century, and not during the civil rights era. As I mentioned earlier, it's the work of every generation to advance freedom and equality. You and I have work to do. Like generations before us, it's our obligation to move uh, our communities, our state, and our nation forward toward a more perfect union. So how can we do our part? Well, the work ne need not require us to go to war or march in the streets. Our work starts internally within ourselves. As you and I go about our daily lives in, in a necessarily divisive nation, let's honestly ask ourselves every day, is the way I'm talking, is the way I'm interacting, is the way I'm behaving, is the way I'm thinking, is it contributing toward creating another barrier for a fellow American, or is it contributing toward greater freedom and opportunity for all God's children living here? No matter our age, the choice is ours. I pray each one of us will choose to contribute daily toward perfecting our union. It was worth founding. It was worth reuniting. It is worth preserving and perfecting. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for listening. And God bless you, the state of Wisconsin, and the greatest nation as the great county of Washington celebrates its fourth annual Juneteenth celebration. Thank you, Will. Thanks for teaching us some things this morning. I took some notes myself, so appreciate you. All right, I'd like to welcome up Mia and Jaden from the Boys and Girls Club of Washington County. They're here represented with many of their uh, peers, as well as the executive director of Jay, Jay Fisher and his staff. Uh, I don't know, if just me and Jaden, if you're coming up as well, Mr. Fisher, just me and Jaden. Guys, welcome up, me and Jaden. They're here today to read some quotes from Frederick Douglass, okay? So for those who don't really know who Frederick Douglass is, Frederick Douglass was a very famous orator around abolition, right? Back in pre-Civil War days and carrying through the Civil War, he actually was a, a close personal friend of President Abraham Lincoln. But before that, he was born a slave, and he escaped and gained his freedom in 1836. And he, within a few years, began to be invited to speak and to write about the abolition of slavery in our nation. So he's a great leader and someone I think we're all, it's worth it to all of us to learn a little bit more about him. And these two fine young people are gonna read some of his more famous quotes. Me and Jane. A battle, a battle is, a battle lost on one is easily described, understood and appreciated, but the moral growth of a great nation requires reflection as well as observation to appreciate it. 
It is not light that we need, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. We have, we have to do with the past only as we can make it useful to the present and the future. Thank you, me and Jaden. Appreciate you both for coming up here. Now I'd like to welcome our second speaker, Nia Oboate. Nia is the founder of Your Life Has Purpose. She's a children's author and she writes books with a unique focus. She writes stories that break racial stereotypes about sports. I told her before I was going to keep her intro brief because I don't want to steal her thunder. I'm looking forward to learning more. Nia Oboate, please come on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So unlike Will, I have to have the paper copy because I get a little nervous up here. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, um, fellow explorers, it is my pleasure to stand before you today to talk about the topic of exploration. Since the dawn of time, humans have always sought to explore the unknown, to satisfy their curiosity and discover new things. Yet, when you think of explorers, the first thing that may come to mind is astronauts, huh? We picture individuals in spacesuits floating in zero gravity and conducting experiments in the depths of space. While astronauts are indeed explorers, the scope of exploration is broader than that. Exploration is about, uh, is about going beyond your comfort zone and venturing into the unknown. It's about seeking out new experiences and pushing the boundaries of what we know. And that doesn't just apply to outer space. Exploration can happen anywhere, at any time, and by anyone. Exploration can happen in your own backyard, in your own city, in your own country. It can happen in the form of a road trip, a hike, or even new foods. It's about breaking out of your routine and trying something new. When I was younger, I lived on a dead end street on the north side of Milwaukee. My parents, my mom and dad, my mom's actually over there, hey mom. <laughs> they were high school sweethearts, um, college graduates who were the working middle class. Our family consisted of myself, my sister, and my older brother. And my sister would never leave my mother's side, so I would have to hang out with my brother because there weren't many girls in my neighborhood. So I ventured out with my brother and his friends. Now, he and I weren't very close, but he wouldn't leave me behind, and he wouldn't let people give him a hard time about me going with him. But if he climbed a tree, I wanted to climb a tree too, just to let him know that I could. <laughs> so we spent the better part of our youth outside exploring, particularly a creek that was close to our house. It was called Lincoln Creek, and it was a few blocks from our house. And we would walk along the embankment and, and we would walk along that embankment exploring until it was time to go home. Each time, we would think about how far we could go and what we would see. And we would follow that creek and find ourselves in the different parts of the city, and we'd step out into the brush as if we had discovered a whole new world. Oftentimes, our clothes would be disheveled and had branches and, and leaves in our hair. But for us, it was like stepping out on the moon because we were discovering places that we had never been. So today, I want to remind you that exploring is not just for astronauts, that when you look up into the sky, you think of all the possibilities to explore. Just a few years ago, I was just a person searching for representation, wanting to invite my niece to explore the sport of triathlons, because I'm a triathlete. I swim, my bike, I run. Wow. And now I am an award-winning author who has transitioned my imagination into children's books, and I pray that my books give readers that same excitement when I went to explore as a young child, particularly for African-American children who are often unsafe in their communities and often seem unwelcome in other communities. But I also wrote my series to start out dialogue about inclusion, possibly encouraging readers to explore various sports. In fact, a few months ago, I got a chance to take my seven-year-old dad <laughs> Well, I got a chance to take my seven-year-old dad to his first hockey game, and he enjoyed it. He 
got a chance to explore hockey for the first time. In fact, I'm gonna buy him tickets for his birthday. <laughs> you see, exploration is not just limited to scientific backgrounds or those who are trained to explore. Anyone can be an explorer regardless of your age or your background. It's about having the courage to step outside of your comfort zone and take a chance of something new. So why should you explore? Why should you venture out into the unknown and take risks? The answer is simple. Exploration leads to discovery. It leads to new knowledge. It leads to new understanding and new perspectives. It leads to the personal growth and self-discovery. It leads to innovation and progress. So I encourage you to explore Juneteenth. In fact, many Americans, they were slaves for generations, but just because of the color of their skin and they didn't find out that they were legally free for two years. Can you imagine paying your mortgage or your rent for two years and knowing that you did not have to? And some of them had to do that for much longer. So in conclusion, I urge you to embrace your inner explorer. Don't limit yourself to preconceived notions. Now it's true, um, you may not like everything that you explore and that's okay. <laughs> but I do encourage you to venture out into the unknown, take risks and be open to new opportunities. Whether it's exploring outer space or exploring a new book, the world is full of wonder. I thank you today for having me and I appreciate it. Thank you. Probably we'll come back and help you on adopting a positive attitude about life. <laughs> Something you should probably be working on. I don't know. Just me, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> That was great. Thank you so much. You know, we only have, um, we really have one national anthem. You heard that earlier today, but there are anthems and themes around major events in our nation and in our society. And one of them, you're going to have the joy of actually hearing uh, just now. It's a song called Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's emblematic about Juneteenth and it's very closely related to it. So I'd like to welcome up Noel Brown. Noel is the executive director of Casa Guadalupe Center. And she will give us a rendition of this song. Oh, one other thing I do want to point out, and that is this. If you have one of these, the lyrics to Lift Every Voice and Sing is in that blue field on the back side of this flyer. Bright star is cast. 
God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might led us into the light, Keep us forever in the path, we pray, lest our feet stray from the places of God where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. True to our God, true to our native land. Wonderful. Thank you. So as we close, uh, first I want to just remind everybody again that there, there are free takeaways over there along the railing. Uh, and Nia's got uh, merchandise books, children's books uh, for purchase back there. Please stop by and say hi to her. Encourage her and take, a, take advantage of some of the merchandise. Um, I, I tell you what, as I'm sitting here, I really love the themes that have um, kind of arisen here that we focused on today. Themes of God, redemption, freedom, and growth. So as we step out of our seats here today and close after the after the benediction here in just a couple of moments, we'll be able to take advantage of those things. We'll be able to go ahead and get to some red velvet cupcakes and cookies and some strawberry milk over there. Again, emblematic and traditional treats of the day. But I want to encourage you as you leave today to embrace the progress we've made in our nation rather than simply cling to the despair of the distant past. Let's all adopt the mindset of Frederick Douglass as he represented in another quote from his July 5th, 1852 speech entitled The Meaning of July 4th for the Negro. He said, now take the constitution according to its plain reading and I defy the presentation of a single pro-slavery clause in it. On the other hand, it will be found to contain principles and purposes entirely hostile to the existence of slavery. So it's been a long road, right? Since it became official, as uh, Will was talking about, some of our history that still continues and has pervaded to this day. But Douglas knew even then that our nation was founded on principles of freedom and liberty for all of us, regardless of our lineage. So may people of every color not just acknowledge, but actually promote that simple truth. So now we're gonna close with benediction again, presented by Pastor Schultz. Enjoy your refreshments. Enjoy the free takeaways and the merchandise and happy Juneteenth to you. Pastor Schultz. We're three minutes ahead of schedule. I was given permission by a uh, county executive that we could uh, do maybe some Gregorian chants or... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just going to pray and then we can go. <laughs> Follow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all who are here today. Thank you for all of those who have gone before us today. Help us as we heard, give us the courage, Lord, to explore, to try new things. Lord, give us the confidence to be the solution, not the problem. Lord, be with us as we face the hills that we climb and give us that confidence that we are truly your children, dearly loved, and that you never leave our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.